By now, I think many of us are aware of the critical state of our planet's biodiversity and the need to preserve every species we can. This is crucial for the well-being of ecosystems, but it's also crucial for the economy, for human health, for climate change mitigation, for cultural preservation, and it's our ethical responsibility as custodians of the earth. But I've been curious for a long time what this work looks like in the real world. So for today's podcast, I took a trip to the Community Baboon Sanctuary located in the country of Belize, which is in Central America. I wanted to visit its director, Jessie Young, because she is an incredible woman who's been leading an all-female team of village leaders to preserve the rainforest and its endangered species for nearly four decades, which is long before many of us were even aware it needed protection. The Community Baboon Sanctuary Women's Conservation Group is a vital link in this extended corridor which runs the length of Belize and throughout most of Central America. And it protects multiple endangered species of animals, trees, plants, and over 250 bird species. Now, women-led environmental groups are vital, yet they're getting only two cents out of every dollar going to environmental causes. And yet, when you hear the extent of the work they're doing and the success they're having, it's really worth taking a closer look. Now, due to some of the limitations of the local internet speed in the rainforest, the proximity of the road, and let's face it, my own technical limitations, the audio on this episode is not optimal. However, what it lacks in fidelity, I think is made up by its authenticity. Now, the video on YouTube is complete with subtitles, so that's an option you may want to take advantage of for this episode. And by the way, while you're there, I'd appreciate it if you could please subscribe and perhaps consider leaving a rating or writing a review. It makes an incredible impact on the podcast. So now please enjoy my conversation with a passionate, resilient visionary, Jesse Young. Hello, Jesse Young. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Welcome. No, oh, you're welcoming me. Yeah. Welcome to the Community Bubble Sanctuary. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us come here and welcome to you to the podcast. It's really lovely to meet you and um, I just, I very much appreciate your taking this time on this hot day to <laughs> sit with us and talk to us about the sanctuary. Um, yeah, so the way that I heard about you initially was um, when I was interviewing um, the co-founder of Daughters for Earth a few weeks ago, uh, Zainab Salvi, and as I and this of course is an organization that's supporting women in mm -hmm. environmental causes around the world, grassroots, community-based women that are. Um, doing their best to preserve some the part of land that they live in and we're in Belize today um, and it's I'm so appreciative to Daughters for Earth for doing that because women get like I think it was something like five cents on the dollar compared to men who are doing conservation so it makes no sense so they're trying to even that playing field a little bit and and, um, and I know they either haven't uh, donated or they're going to here so um, I'm excited about that. So that's how I heard about you. I happened to be spending some time in Belize and it just worked out that I could come over and meet you in person. We're the first in-person podcast recording we've done. Oh, wow. so awesome. Yes, <laughs> that's yes awesome. You're, yeah. you're a star. Well, I'm happy to, to be a part of it. And, um, and yes, we have received some funding from Doctors of the Earth. We were very, very... Um, Amazed because we didn't know where they even found us from. But I wonder. Know, I was going to ask you how they I found you. I think they found us through the Equator Initiative Award that we received in 2017. From who? From the UNDP. I oh, think UNDP. It is. So um, the UN Development Program. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the Equator Initiative. It's called. Oh, so okay. we won that award in 2017. Oh. So I think that the Daughters of the Earth yeah. um, found us there on their I see. platform. Yeah. So they haven't been here. 
No, they have oh, been here. Maybe they'll be interested. Yes, in I, hope they, really I hope exist. they can visit one day. Yeah. Oh, I hope so too. Because well, at least we are they can... so very, very thankful, and and the funding from them came at a time when we really, really needed it because of COVID. We were closed for almost two years. Two years. Yes, and then our um, main staff had left us to find job other places oh. um, because we couldn't really pay their salaries. Yeah. And so, um, what the funds from Daughters of the Earth did was to allow us to um, pay salaries for at least two staff so that we can reopen. Oh, that's um, wonderful. Um, you know, start that's our cool. operations again. Was that last year or two years ago? Or it something? was last year. Yeah, okay. it was last year. Well, so um, here you are now. Um, mm -hmm. You are the president of an elected seven-member board of directors who run the community baboon sanctuary. Um, Women's Conservation Group, it's a long name, right? Yes, it, it is a long name, <laughs> but yes. But yes, every word yes. is important. So Community Baboon Sanctuary mm -hmm. Women's Conservation Group. Mm -hmm. So, so we can say CBS Women's Conservation you know, just to make it short. <laughs> we might call it CBS just for today. Yeah, yeah, we can do that. <laughs> okay. We can do that, yes. Because it's only an hour show, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so were you, are you from this area, though? Yes, actually, I was born in St. Paul's Bank, which is like seven miles from here. Oh, so, you're so just I born was born and raised there. there. Yes. So, how did you get interested in the in the baboon sanctuary? And, and just before we go on, it's called the Black Howler Monkey. Uh, yes, other it's parts? not baboons. It's it's um, the British call them baboons, but they are actually black howler monkeys. Oh, that came from the British. Yes, it came from British the colony. British. Yes. Oh, yes. that's, that's yes. So, but that caught on because everyone around yes, here it, now it, calls it, them Yeah, and it oh, caught right. on and because they, 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 the monkeys are, were always here. Yeah, and they were so, here before um, the British. Right, <laughs> right. But, but I think people were not paying much attention to them. Mm -hmm. And then when the British came in, they, they called them baboons. Yeah. And that's how the name stuck with them yeah. as baboons. But they are really black color monkeys that is only found in in Costa Rica, Belize, and some parts of Guatemala. Oh, okay. Because in those countries, they eat them for food. Oh, but they eat they, them? Yeah, they really do hunt them for food. Did they used to hunt them here as well? No, they they, never no did. not for food, no. So why, what was the original, because how when you started, when this whole organization started, mm -hmm. it was like in the 80s, I think. Yes, it right? was in 1981 that Dr. 81. Harwich came and started to do his research. He actually started because of a filling he saw that was done in this very village by the river. Um, there is a huge fig tree there that is, uh, and the filling is called Amate, the great fig tree that was filling a by fig. Tree? Fig. F -I -G. The food, yeah. Um, that was filling by by Carol and Richard, the late Richard Pastor. Okay. And so that filling brought Waperwich to Belize um, to study the monkeys because he thought that. You know, he saw a lot of monkeys in the village. And so that brought him to Belize and he started his research from 1981 up to 1985. Okay. And then he found out that um, this area has the largest population of the Howler monkeys. So then he then approached the, the village council, which is like the little government of the village I see. here, of which my husband was the chairman. Oh. And so um, bringing all uh, his research and the idea of creating a sanctuary for the monkeys. And so um, the community were invited to a meeting and 12 landowners signed on. How many? 12 at, the, at that very meeting. Oh. Um, 12 landowners signed on. And it was like um, simple little management pledges to not to clear cut the riverbanks or erosions. Um, not to cut the trees the monkeys use for food. So wait, was this, was, were these conservation method, uh, methods all just to protect the black howler monkey? No, it wasn't because, because the general. erosion would, would um, um, protect the farmers' crops. Okay, so from there, running, it was a multi-purpose. Right, so it was not only for the monkeys, it was to protect the farmers I and see. the crops and everything as well. Okay, so, wow. And great. then, um, after this community and the 12 that signed on, um, we took the message to 
the other six communities and they also signed on. So we ended up at the time with 70 um, landowners that signed on to those. 70? Yes. 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 And yes. Exactly. across seven villages? Yes, seven okay. villages. Yes. So as far as the, what was the, were, were the how many monkeys, how many were here when that started? When they counted um, the 800 monkeys 800? then. 800? Yes. And there's that was what the research that they did, oh the census. Goodness. And today we have over like between five to six hundred, um, thousand, thousand sorry, yeah. thousand monkeys. I know that Hurricane Lisa probably wiped some out, but the Hurricane Lisa that oh, struck hurricane? in November last year. Oh. Because, for instance, the main um, troop that we take visitors to see, mm -hmm. they were like, Seven, there are only three left now. So we know for a fact that some oh. died, but we haven't been able to get a census done since the wow. hurricane. So wow. we know so we you're lost fighting a some, lot of different yeah, things. Yeah, a lot of yeah. different things, yes. All right. So, but well, speaking about you in particular, mm -hmm. you, you just retired as the director? No, I retired as the, I was the community development officer at the Belize Red Cross. Really and good. then I was also um, project management. I did project management, so I was oh. the head of project management unit. Yeah. And then um, of the Red yeah. Cross. So you did that for 44 years? And you worked yes. for them for 44 years? I did years for 44 well. years. I, I was also a trainer and facilitator oh for a community disaster response team. Wow. Um, I'm a psychosocial. Um, First aid facilitator, conflict okay. management um, facilitator. Um, so, so okay. that, that was what I did. Well, so you, you, that's your regular job. So, work, your work here as the director has been volunteer? Volunteer. Oh, Everything is years? voluntary. Um, actually, since 1985. Since 1985, you've been Yes, because here? when when the when the center was officially established in, in on the twenty third of February 1985, mm -hmm. I was right along. Um, from 1981, when Doctor Horwich came, we were along with him. My husband did all the um, we helped him with the research and everything, and I oh. would prepare the food and in the background. Oh. So I was always there. And then when it came to the the, the posters and everything. I, I used to um, iron them because there was no lamination oh. at the time. So I laminated them with an the iron that oh, you, you laminated eat, them with you the iron. on a stove. And, okay. and so that was how we did all the posters for here. So I was very involved from the very beginning, but didn't have much of a say. Yeah. I was just in the back. Ah, so the men were running it. Yes, it was all men running it, and at that time it was under the management of the Belize Audubon Society. On oh, the Audubon, right? Yes, and then in 1995, Belize Audubon Society um, said, due to financial constraint, they could no longer um, take on the management. So they started to train local and people to take over the management, and that was when. The men took over, really took over from 1995. Um, it didn't last them too long. And in 1998, this, the sanctuary was all uh, closed. And you know, oh, um, the, well, 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 I shouldn't say the sanctuary was closed, but the office was closed. And there was no function, nothing was happening. Mm. And so being there from the very beginning, mm -hmm. Um, I said, you know what, I just cannot sit by and see a good thing go to waste. Yeah. And so what I did, I approached women that I know were already leaders in their community. Some of them are working with um, Breast is Best and those <coughs> kind of um, organization. And so I approached them and I said, what do you think about us forming a women's group to take over the management of the sanctuary? Because, mm -hmm. you know, it's, we just can't leave it. Yes. And so um, they agreed, and we did. We formed our group. Um, we we got free registration because it was donated. I should say free. The registration was donated by what was donated actually. The to payment. The payment for our to be legally registered. Oh, I see. Yes. So the the, the owner of the Jungle Drift Lodge at the time, no Hola Monkey Lodge, they paid for our registration. Oh. 
And then following that, we approached the landowners and we said, um, you know, uh, what do you think about giving us permission to take over the management of the sanctuary? And we had a petition. I'm sorry, the what program? Um, a petition. We did oh, a petition, petition with the landowners mm -hmm. to give us permission to take over the management of the sanctuary. Of the sanctuary? And so, okay. Of the community management sanctuary. So was the sanctuary um, always 20, like, well, it's about 20 square miles 20 right square now, miles. And it's yeah. always been that same size? Yes, it's been that same size from the beginning. So, and it's funny because, you know, when you think about 20 square miles, it's a lot, but on the, on one hand, but on the other hand, it's not that much. No. <laughs> but the importance of it is so far reaching. Yes, it is. Because there's a number of species that are in danger that oh, we're yeah. protecting here. Oh, yeah. There and it, I mean, I think I was just surprised to learn that you could make that much of a difference in just a, you know twenty square miles. Because what like what are some of the what are some of the animals that are endangered or that you're protecting right now? Um, apart from the howler monkeys, mm -hmm. we have the five species of cats in the CBS area. Of cats? Yes, we have the jaguar, cat? the jaguar only, the ocelot, the margay. Oh, yes, I knew there was a jaguar, there's yes. five species. We, there is five species in oh, the that's very We important. have all five species here in the sanctuary. Oh. We also have the tapir um, that is also protected. Um, is that the white-lipped? No, 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 the... that's the, locally it's called mountain cow, but it's a tapir, so our national on the animal. Tapir. Yep, yep. It's yeah. All the signs for yes. it on the road. Yeah. Yes. So we do have um, the tapir as well okay. within the sanctuary, and many other. Uh, we have over two hundred and fifty species of birds. Two hundred and fifty. Mm -hmm. Oh my mm -hmm. goodness! Whoa. Yes. So, so then you we, start seeing the import, and then I know right. have the, I know there's a. I think it's called the Central American and river turtle. River yes, turtle. the hikati. We we also have that. Which we have is the, the green iguana as well. Oh, iguana. Yes, and and the fact that the communities within the sanctuary they are all on the banks of the Belize River. Okay. So it's very important as well to make sure that we protect our waterways. So not only um, terrestrial, but also we look at all the water okay. ways to make sure, because a lot of people still use the river for it's swimming. It's a beautiful river Washing, too. you know, some oh. even drink in the dry season okay. right now. Sure. They even still drink that water. Yeah, so, sure. You know. Wow. So, so you're protecting a lot of different things. You've a lot of different things. Animals, you have plants that you're also, yes. like the whole growth of plants that are, mm -hmm. I don't know if there's, uh, species there that are unique to just as areas. Yes, we have we people. have the we have the mahogany, we have um the, the saber okay. that they call the saber tree, we have the zarikote. So we have all the hardwood species in these within the sanctuary. And what we are introducing right now is the Maya nut tree. I'm not so um Maya nut? Yeah, I, I can't remember the scientific name. <laughs> but it's called Maya nut, yeah. and it's it it's good for um, feed for cattle. It's it protects against erosion, hurricanes, oh, really? um, yes, droughts, and it can be used as uh, as food even for humans. Mm -hmm. So you can make tortillas, you can make different oh. things, you can make a flower from from oh, the from the nuts, and it yeah. provides shades for cattle, food yeah. for animals and, and humans. Wow. So this we are in, we, we have introduced it within the CBS to farmers to plant along the banks of the river to protect against erosion and so on. So. I see. And it, I think I read somewhere it's also drought resistant. Yes, it is. Right. It is. So are, is, are you trying to encourage them to, to plant crops that are just better for the environment rather right. than, what, what would they be planting otherwise? Well, they'd be um, cutting down trees for yes, one thing, they, right? they, normally they, they would have done the slash and burn milpa system. Oh. And so every year they would cut a different section. So um, the other women who are in the, um, which we, what do we call it? Just the the group, women's group. The mm -hmm. women's group. Um, there's one for each of the seven villages and they're all contiguous, all creating this mm -hmm. corridor so, so mm -hmm. animals can move back and forth. Um, and, and there's a three member committee and I'm just, how does that work? Like, uh, and so you're the representative mm -hmm. now, right? You're the, mm -hmm. you're the, the president. The top, mm -hmm. top banana. And then, <laughs> and then you have a three 
person committee? No, it's seven. Oh, seven, seven of us. Okay, yeah. I have so an advisory person. committee. Maybe yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. The advisory was three. Okay. Yeah. So then, how often do you meet? How does that? How do you manage um, it together? We would normally meet every three months, mm -hmm. but. Um, if there is an issue or something that comes up, then we would meet, um, you know, just to address those issues. Okay. Whatever time is needed. And is it a cohesive group? Do they put this description on? Uh, you look like. See, everybody in Belize seems like yeah. they're they're kind. It is. And it get is. Along. It's very cohesive, and and a lot of um, other groups ask us, "How do you do it? How how do you stay together? Yeah. You know, for so long?" And I was yeah. like, um. First thing, you have to respect each other. Okay. You know, once you have that respect, you can work together. We all want the same thing. Yeah. We are all um, mothers and have other um, activities that we do. And so I think that is um, very, um, it, it is very common. Um, we, have, we have similarities then within our groups. But you have a lot of differences as well, right? Like different yes, we education do. levels, well, we different do. religions. We actually do, um, but that doesn't stop us from, from working together for mm -hmm. the same cause. No. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I think this is one thing that women tend to really excel at, is that they know how to collaborate, or they learn how to collaborate. So you've got seven women from seven, from villages, seven different villages, very different lifestyles. Mm -hmm. Are there some, is it true, some are different religions and different, is that? Yes, some are different religions, some are different political parties. Oh, so that part yeah, is important. Yeah, yeah. And, and um, you know, some have their different sure. roles in the community that they also play. Hmm. But um, when it's time to, to get the work done here, we all come together and, and you know, work yeah. together to get the work done. So, uh, this is, I'm just so naive about how this works. Like, what is the work that you do, actually? Okay, we have to do a lot of um, planning and designing and organizing. Okay. You know, um, we have to keep the, the, our membership very engaged in whatever we are doing here. Okay. Um, then this, the, this CBS is the only community-based organization that is operating within the Belize River Valley. And it's, it's the only organization that does what? That's that is operating, whether operating. it's a, it's a conservation or, okay. or yeah. you know, Any social, time. whatever. It's huh. the only remaining um, long-standing organization huh. within the Belize River Valley. Because well, there are many others that came and they failed and, mm -hmm. you know, but we are still here standing strong. So. And do you think collaboration is the reason for that? It is. And respect? It is. Definitely. So when you say planning, so are you planning like what can be planted, what can be cut down, all that at that granular level? Um, not really. That usually would come to us from our membership, from the community itself. Okay. But we um, we organize like programs for the community, like we have mm -hmm. our annual summer pro education and summer programs for over two hundred kids. On a, yes, on a yearly basis. Oh. Um, we have our ecotourism and um, mm -hmm. expo and commerce fair. Yeah. Um, you know, we have ed our educational program in schools. We have that we visit schools um, oh. and different community activities that, that we would be mm -hmm. engaged in. We work closely with the forestry department um, when it comes to, to forestry and wildlife. We work with the fisheries department. Wow. Yes, we oh, work wow. with other NGOs. We are a founding member of APAMO, which is the Association of Protective Area Management Organization. So the CBS is a founding member of, of that organization as well. So um, there, there is a lot that that needs to be done besides trying to maintain a healthy population, a healthy forest for the population of the whole amount is to go and other wildlife as well. So yeah. it's, um, it's, a, it's a really big responsibility. It That's is a why big you've been doing it part time and as yes. you're all doing it as volunteers yes. um, for so long. Mm -hmm. um, well, that, that's very impressive. And, and I think that's why 
the Goddess for the Earth decided to support women in part because there are, are these long-lasting relationships yes. and this is all over in every country, kind of the same mm -hmm. thing happening. Mm -hmm. So it's very hopeful to me that, you know, if, because I would think, like, is there, is there a lesson that you would, like, that you've, lessons that you've learned here from just managing the land and managing the people really and, and expectations and um, education, like something that you could share with the rest of the world in terms of like what we could learn from you. <laughs> <laughs> um, in, in, in Belize, it, it's slightly different because as you know they call us a melting pot of cultures. So there are so many different cultures in these. Mm -hmm. In if you go in the south, you wouldn't see women really in the front when you would cast community meetings. The women would normally sit in the back and don't really um, have a voice. Oh, the no. men would be the ones speaking. Here in the Belize River Valley, which is like the heart of the Creole culture, Creole speaking, mm -hmm. um, the, the the women are the ones who would mostly step up and have a voice and are more conservation conscious. Um, I, don't I wonder know. why that is. Do you know? I really would. You know, I think it's because um, we try to, to, to protect what we have. We, life is not that easy in this area of, of Belize and it's getting worse yes, and yes. so we know how to protect what is around us for our future generations and we have been doing that all, all along maybe we were not aware that we were doing it uh -huh. but now that we know then we can go back and say oh you know what we were doing back then contributes to what we are doing now so it, it, uh -huh. it kind of um, empowers us to, to want to do more does it you know and and so because the women were mostly stay at home moms we are the ones that would take care of the farms we are the ones that would take care of the kids the schools the budget then we handle the budget for for the family because we most of the women were stay at home moms at the at back in those early sure. days of, sure. of the sanctuary so we had the time Mm -hmm. And the men would normally be out of the area working. They would go maybe for two weeks and come home only for a weekend. Okay. And, and so managing everything. Right. And so the women were always there. And so when there, any um, activity or, or programs would come along, the women would always be there. So you know? that that and history. it continues. Uh -huh. <laughs> And that history is fed into what you're doing right, now. Right, it does. It and now does. you're aware of what you've been doing all these all, years. All these years, all these years. Because when I was a child growing up, I had the passion for, for wildlife and forests. You did, just um, naturally. When I used to get into trouble, I had this huge oak tree across from our house. Yeah. And, and I had all cleaned out angrily. And I, I go there and I would sit. And then I would look at all the birds and the bees and the insects and they seem so happy and I would like I would want to be as happy as these birds and oh. animals and here I am my mom wants to punish me for something I did wrong and these birds and animals are so happy and that's my comfort zone yep. that's where I would go all the time when I get into trouble so I, I, I developed this passion for wildlife and, oh. and forest and so so that was in me from a very young age and then when, when Dr. Horwich came along with the idea of creating a sanctuary, I was like, Yes, this is right what I want to do, you know. What a blessing. Yeah. I mean really you have had this your whole life too. So because I was saying it's amazing that you've been working full time with the Red Cross for four, yes. four years and also doing this, but uh, but this was kind of your. I'm sure you had work that you enjoyed, but this yes. is where you really. And a lot about. of the work with the Red Cross, it, it kind of um, complements yeah. the work of the CBS yeah. as well because we we work with um, um, eco eco agriculture. You know, um, oh. you know, huh. we, we do a lot of. Um, 
ecology as well with the Red Cross and, and working with communities, doing like they put projects that are sustainable mm -hmm. and and you know so so and when it comes to disaster risk reduction, we teach communities about protecting their waters, mm -hmm. protecting the river from erosion. So it yeah. complements yeah. the work, and I Definitely. think that is why. I stayed so long because I can learn so much from them to bring here and, and what I learn here I think there. Yeah. So I think that was why I decided to, to, um, to stay there that long because it's, it's, it goes together. That's really beautiful actually. You've had a very nice life, I think. Yes, and, I, mean, yeah. I know you've had a hard life probably. Fulfilled, too. fulfilled I would say because a lot of what I wanted to see get done is getting done. Um, what happens now, though, since yeah. um, I wouldn't only say COVID because I have seen it occurring um, maybe over the last maybe 10 years, people started to move away from the community. Oh, because of And COVID displacement. Because of the loss. From COVID, it got worse since mm -hmm. COVID. And then they yeah. would go out of the area to find jobs and then they don't return. Mm -hmm. So what happens or area suffers from, from uh, brain drain, you know, go leave and go. And now I'm seeing my communities are struggling to, for leadership um, mm -hmm. because the past leaders have either um, maybe passed on or they have moved out mm -hmm. for a different life somewhere. Uh -huh. And so, um, some of the young people, they, they really, mean. and I wouldn't even credit it to say that they don't have an interest. Maybe they don't know enough yeah, exactly. to have the interest. And so I thought that I still have some years in me. I, I want to come here so that I can um, try to bring them in, you know, like a That's succession beautiful. kind of plan that the youths are get that interest in the CBS and wants to come in and, and take over. I, I you think know? you're so right about not knowing enough because I, I certainly feel that way. I've never been to sanctuaries. I have been to some certain mm -hmm. kinds of sanctuaries in the United States, but not to like a, something like this. And, and it's so, the less you know, the less interested you are. That's right. And when you walk in, now we, I haven't had a chance to do it yet, but like, as, as you walk on a, I don't know if you take tours yourself, but you know where to walk. Mm -hmm. Like, do you see the animals? Do you see the monkeys? Do you see, have you ever seen the cats? Like the, do you yes, see I've them? Seen them. <laughs> yeah. And the monkeys are there. You can see them almost a hundred percent. You will see monkeys. So you're yeah. like, you get to know them. Yes. Yeah. And even if you're not a person who naturally maybe mm -hmm. loves that mm -hmm. type of wildlife, I think too, the more you get to know and you understand how important every species is, whether it's a, a flower or like this turtle, which is, mm -hmm. you know, it's on the critically uh, endangered, endangered yeah. list. I mean, yes. so they're almost gone. And yeah, only because, almost I don't gone. know if you weren't right here, if they would even be here at all. I know. So, I mean, I your know. life is like you mm -hmm. see the importance of your actions. And we have good cooperation with the community members because they would call us and report torching if they would see people doing torching of the turtles oh. or the green iguanas. They would call the office. The they are because it's a delicacy, you know. Oh, it, 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 is, it, is. it is still a delicacy in Belize, and around Easter time is when the demand is there for oh. those turtles. And so you oh. cannot. The forestry department or uh, the fisheries, you can have at least two turtles. It's not, you cannot sell. Mm -hmm. um, it's just for your own home consumption. Mm -hmm. But in the month of May, you cannot touch, um, them. touch them, harvest them at all. Mm -hmm. um, and we have been advocating because if you take the turtles from as early as February or March, they already have red eggs small eggs and so if you only give them until May when they're ready to lay their eggs that's a whole lot of babies already gone because people are reaping them it, it is illegal but they still do right. and the thing the government doesn't have the resources to to 
to do the enforcement. No, you can't enforce. All so, those so, 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 that's, so that's the problem. And, and some of our community members are they, they are getting very discouraged because when when we call the fisheries people, oh. they they don't have the resource to come out, and so they feel like they are just wasting their time. And, yeah. and these people are are just rape, raping our forest and. Um, Belize River Valley, which is community Babu Sanctuary, mm -hmm. is a part of. Um, I don't know what happened to the rest of the country if they have exhausted everything in the rest of the country. But this is the area now where we are very challenged because people from other districts are coming in here, they are doing logging, they are taking our sand. You're even diving in the river to find artifacts. They are taking our leaves for catch. They are taking our sand taking and everything. gravel. Oh, everything. Taking your sand. They are coming in this area to take. And, and so we and have to really stand up and, and advocate now yeah. and try to stop it. What is here is here for us. Oh, I'm so you sorry. know, um, it, it's really sad. Are these are these foreigners? Are they Belizean? Is it both? So a lot of them are, are the Mennonites um, and they do logging. They have logging concessions. All right, that's good to know. Yes, and then others are... They're not local, so Mennonites that came from the U.S. or something? Yes, yes. And then we have the migrants that, that are settled in like Valley of Peace and those communities. Huh. And so um, they come in and they would do the fishing. They hmm. come in with ice boxes and they would stay like a week and they take everything that they can find. Oh. And so some of our local people are even scared to approach them. Yeah. You know, so well, it's so dangerous. To it, approach it is somebody. dangerous. Yeah. And sometimes they would just take the tail from the crocodile just oh. and leave the rest in the river oh. floating because they would sell the tail. Oh. And the little minnows fish, they would take them by the sack. Um, and that's a hundred pound sack of minerals that they would take and then they sell them to the Chinese because they eat them a lot. Well, and it's so, a lot for you to manage. It is a lot. Yeah. It Unless is the community a lot. is behind us. Yes. And, and so we keep getting all of these reports and everything, but where we are lacking is the enforcement. We don't, okay. we cannot make an arrest. Um, right. And there is just not enough people in the, in the government, in, in the ministry. So if serve. someone were to, um, I mean, as you raise funds, what do those funds go to? Would they help to protect some of that? Would you be able so, to hire someone maybe that could actually mm -hmm. help, uh, you know, address, go up to someone and, and then arrest them if they <laughs> cut the tail it's, off? It, and, it's, it's dangerous. Yeah. To, to um, we do have we do hire some wardens, um, okay. um, but but because they don't have an arresting power, mm -hmm. they won't approach the poachers. Okay. A policeman would have to be there okay. to for their own safety but and protection. If you had greater funds, would you be able to? Have oh yes, we would train wardens because that is what we, we need to train yeah. wardens with arresting power. Okay. And that has been the topic of, of the APAMO meetings that we go, that all of the protected areas are facing some kind of the same issues. Okay. So we need, um, we need to have more wardens with arresting power since, right. they, you know. So really, I mean, you're at the front lines, you're literally doing the work on the ground, but you need support from the wider world yes, we to help you just do what you're doing. and. It would be nice if it weren't only volunteer. I know. Always, but I you know, know, maybe that's something. Um, I just want volunteering to... has become a little bit difficult now because of the situation of the economy in the country. Is and the people, whole economy yeah. down since COVID? It is down. It is down. It is down. Um, even though. Um, they are saying that the GDP has grown and so on. It's not being felt on the ground. And so there is a lot of people still out of job that haven't gotten back there to get job. And so um, poverty is, is very high and people need to survive. 
Yeah. And so they will do whatever it takes sure, to feed their yeah, family. You can understand that. And so that is why we try to do livelihood projects as uh -huh. part of our operations. We, we will put in livelihood projects. So um, truly, we, 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 we got an, a grant from the Global Environmental Facility. And so we are doing backyard gardening, we are giving people seeds to grow vegetables, yeah. um, we are giving them chickens and, and those kind of mm. things to, yeah. to, to like a bounce back for them after hurricanes and COVID. So, oh, um, so the hurricane and COVID. Yes, because COVID, when COVID was just about um, slowing down, hurricanes are killed. And this area was really affected by um, Billy's district. And the city, we were the largest hit. The, the, um, the impact was greater on this area. I, you know, and Belize was very strict as far as COVID shutdown. Yes, you know, it was. It, it was more strict, and I felt like yes, they I shut us down here. Complete, everything it, was yes, shut down. We were shut down until they gave the go ahead yeah, to open. It's so amazing that people depending on tourism, all our income because we get no sub pension from the government or anything so we depend solely on the fees we call it for a tour mm -hmm. here for wow. which isn't very much no it doesn't yeah. so so we have to be constantly writing grants to get um, funds to to do our programs and, and you know livelihood projects and uh, yeah. well, reforestation we have a, a we have um, done a research on the the forest within the CBS and on the river um, mm. forest. And so we have that concept now that is to do re forest restoration involving mm. the, the high school students, so like cool. a hub from there so they can get involved into this I, um, idea and so on. Yeah, I'm so happy, and I know this is one of the most important things you do is teach children and, and, and students because. We didn't, I don't know about you, but I didn't develop learning any conservation. None of, very few of us were even aware of conservation growing up. And for the next generation, it's the most important thing that they need to know to survive to keep the earth going. It is. And it's the, kids, the most important thing. The yeah. kids are fast learners, and they what yeah. they learn, they take home to their parents. Right. You know, and so we believe in investing in them. Um, for the future, so yeah. we really and and our summer program has been going on for almost twenty years now. That's fantastic. And it's, yeah. it's we we used to do a hundred up to two hundred kids. Um, That's a lot. We went down to just fifty since uh -huh. COVID because uh -huh. everything is has raised fuel, have raised is raised food raised, yeah. and so we can only do fifty for for a week. Yeah. But, well, but we are get still that number up a little bit. Yes. And because you're protecting, um, and this is part of, like, you know, where we can start to close out our conversation, but I think we've kind of covered a lot of the topics. But this, um, the, what is the term for the, this corridor that you're in? Is it like the Maya River corridor? Or is there, is there a name for this corridor you're protecting? Oh no, this is the Community Baboon Sanctuary. Right, but isn't it there a larger corridor that's... Um, oh, oh yes, we are linked to the Maya Forest Maya Corridor. Forest. Yes. Okay. So that's not, this is linked to the Maya Forest. Yes, okay. and then we also have on our borders, on the west, we have Program for Belize and we have the Spanish Creek Wildlife Sanctuary. Okay, oh, on, there's on, other sanctuaries. Yes, yes and then you have Cookie Tree on, on our I north. I see, so this is your whole corridor connects to other ones and right. so is this like carrying going all the way down into what's south of uh, Guatemala south of us? The, you, you have the, the um, Maya forest that would go all the way down um, into the, the Stan Creek district um, okay. and that area and then you have the, the Selva Maya that would go north program for Belize into Guatemala area. Oh, okay. So that's the Selva Maya, but the Maya Forest Corridor is connected um, along those paths. I mean, I guess what I'm trying to, my point is just that it, this link is so critical. It is critical. Because if this link were to go away, it all breaks. It will definitely break because this is the link like in, in, in the heart from Belize right. coming. You yes, know, and it just like the center of the chain, yes. and yes. if the chain breaks, then yes. then yes. yeah, definitely, the whole thing definitely. Ends. definitely.
Is there anything else that you'd want people to know of before we close up, or do you feel like you've covered a lot of the topics that you um, want people to know? I, I believe that in Belize, um, women in conservation are not being recognized okay. for all the work that we do. Um, I think the, the, I don't know if it's because of our status as women or it's simply because we are still living in a, in a male dominated country. Mm -hmm. And so, um, Slash yeah, yeah. So, so I think that um, we need to, to, to be more, we need to make our voices be heard mm -hmm. more, mm -hmm. you know, and, and we need to showcase the work that yes. we are doing because we are not doing that enough. And, yes. and a lot it's of people don't do. know about yeah. the work that we are doing and what we have accomplished over mm -hmm. the years, you know, and so I think that, um, that we really need to, to uh, continue advocating for, for more women in conservation, mm -hmm. you know, because yes. I, for me, it's, it's, my motto is none but ourselves. And that's what- Your motto is what? None but ourselves. Oh. And that is what I go by. Uh, and that is what I bring to the table every time. And when, when the woman in my group would get discouraged sometimes, mm -hmm. I try to tell them, no, we, we, just, we are no quitters. We can't quit. We just have to continue the work. If we don't do it, no one will it do it. get done. That's yeah. a lot of pressure, yes. but it's also a nice responsibility to know that your lives are so important. Yes, it and is. your work is it so is. important. It and is. It's, it's sustainability it is. for Belize, and really. It is. And when you see um, the work that we have put in and what we have accomplished over the years, there is quite a lot. It's, it's been a quite long a time. Long. It a is a long time, long and, time. and um, a lot of you know, you, you have to constantly be adapting to changes. So you know, in order to, to survive in this type yes. of climate change and yeah. everything, so so you just cannot stay one place. And and for um, the CBS, we kind of lack um, human resource. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. So, so that is what we would need here to to help us to to more, more bodies to, <laughs> to not to compete but to to have that seat at the table, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah. more yeah. more scientific research okay. um, to to get the collect the data that we need to collect okay. so that we can be at that table and say, hey, this is what is happening. This is what, this we, is need. what we need, yeah. you know, and we need you to help us to do this. All right. Well, I will do my best to get your, your story out and your message out. I love coming here. I love the air here. I love the people here. I love the the cohesiveness of the community. And um, so I do, you know, as I said, I'll, I'll, I'll do my best to get the word well, out. Well, thank you and so much. We'd love to help you expand your work and continue your work. And yes. you, just, you just stay healthy and keep going. We need you. <laughs> Well, I'm we'll so you happy to you have can. you here, and, and um, you know, we, we like to, um, we appreciate people like you coming here to help us to get our stories out there, because, yeah. you know, it means a lot to us yeah. um, thank you. for the work we do. Yes. All right. Well, until next time, thank you so thank much. Thank you. Thank All you, right. too.